U.S. Steel Heart. Again, that was the golden age. Black and white, no tape, live. There were many programs like that. There was Pulitzer Prize Playhouse. There was, um, oh, it escaped my mind. But U.S. Steel and all those shows. Elgin Hour was another one. They were the classic dramas of the time. Some of them were one hour, live, some an hour and a half. And what was fascinating was we were working with people that we didn't even realize the importance of who they were, because they were learning also. I was certainly learning. I was at the low end of the pole. But who was sitting next to me? Rod Serling. Who was on camera? Tallulah Bankhead. Richard Kiley. Charlie Dubin, great director. One of my favorites. And we were all learning together. That was fascinating. And I was doing my lighting thing, being as dramatic as I could, because most of these were dramas. None of them, to my recollection, were musicals. They were all dramas. So, we were, who, who were the other people? Tad Moselle, Reginald Rose, writer, uh, John Frankenheimer, George Schaefer, Marty Ritt. I mean, some of the illustrious names in the directing world, in the writing world, in the acting world. Grace Kelly. Justin, Dustin Hoffman. I mean, on and on and on it goes. Dinah Shore. Uh, uh, incredible experience. Uh, Omnibus was another show. But to your point, uh, your question, U.S. Steel and all those, they were all dramas, pretty much. Then came the documentaries like, quote documentary, like Omnibus. Robert Sodek was the producer, brilliant producer. I hated him for one reason. I really didn't. I mean, I respected him so much. But he would come in at the last minute and change the order of things. We didn't have a memory system. Everything had to be done manually. It used to drive me nuts, because I had a memory. This was the memory system, right here. It had to remember where all the cues were, because when he'd take this segment and put it over here, to him, it was a piece of paper. To me, it was a catastrophe. And it was live. And we'd go on in a half an hour, and I better have it done. Was that training or what? Was that good? Did I learn my trade right there? And better not screw up either, I mean. Great challenges, great. How ambitious was the series in terms of, in, for Omnibus, for instance, in terms of lighting of each of those segments? Very much, very. Once the reputation was that, hey, this kid is artistic, he can do it. Well, the demands got better. I, God forbid I make them flat. Well, <laughs> well, you can't do that. You light it yet? You gotta light it. Well, light it meant make it look dramatic. You see, television, no, let me start a little bit. Life is three-dimensional, isn't it? We see things in three dimensions. Well, most people do. I may not, but people do. Television is two-dimensional. The attempt is always to make television look three-dimensional. That's one of the goals. One of the best tools to achieve that is light, because we can achieve highlight and shadow and depth all with light. Then we add color to that, another element that can help do that. And of course, camera, lenses, everything starts to play in the game. But light is where it starts in terms of helping to achieve the third dimension on a two-dimensional screen. And that's how we would try to do it, and all the shows that, that I worked on, that was expected of me. It was expected that it would look 
three-dimensional, dramatic. Uh, not dramatic, murder mystery dramatic, but dramatic, not washed out. Had depth, quality. Well, Omnibus was a potpourri of segments, maybe three or four or five within an hour or an hour and a half, whatever it was. There was one, I think it was with Agnes de Mille. It was, I think it was her segment, but they did, with a ballet company, a section of Sylphide, you know, Les Sylphides. And we didn't have a lot of scenery. We had some, what they call smile act, which is hanging leaves, real live leaves, out of the wilderness. I throw a light through it and created a leaf pattern on the floor. Today we do it with Lycos, but then we did it with leaves. And that became part of the scenery. And at the very end of that segment, where the music comes, I get goose flesh when I think of it, because it's one of those moments that I cherish where the elements came together. Light, music, dance, direction. All that. And as the lights change to achieve the final look, when the ballerinas also did the final look and the music came to an end, all in sync, I remember talking to my electrician. Easy, easy, easy. A little faster, a little fa easy, and, and stop. And that, that stop was when the music stopped and the dancing stopped and everything. And it was like, Glorious. Now, maybe the people at home didn't feel the same way, but I tell you, I did. I felt it was a, a moment in my life that I'll never forget. So, these were great payoffs. They didn't pay much money then, but that wasn't the effort.